E-Man, what did you bring for us this week, bruh? Oh, you're setting up cameras over here? Yeah. <laughs> um, so out of Ordoc Brewing Company that I've never even All heard right, of. we got it. We up. All right, yeah. so, <laughs> so out of Ordoc Brewing out in Marquette, Michigan, we have the Bazaka. I just want to say it like that because we got Clerks 3 coming out soon, so it makes me think of that, and that's kind of why I wanted to pick it up. You see they added the, uh, the tour to Detroit? Yeah, I was just telling man. them about that yeah. on the way here. Yup, me and my girl are gonna probably go down there and check it out. I would go to that too. I'm like very, I'm like nervous about the movie, but I'm excited at the same time. Did you watch the trailer? Yeah, yeah, and I was like, man, it's been like 10 years since the last Clerks movie. It's like 10, 15 years actually, and it's just like, I'm excited, but I'm like, is it gonna, is it gonna hit that same level? Because Clerks 1, classic, you know. I feel like they're gonna be making fun of like a lot of like tropey things about like sequels. It seemed like in the trailer, they're like, you know, like, so Jay and Silent Bomb have been relevant in this many years, but you guys keep putting them in your fucking movies. <laughs> like, like like, yeah, no, like, like, sequels. I'm not an amateur. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We're going gotta, back to the beer. We, I got to oh. say, though, I'm not an IPA person, but I'm going to try it out of respect. <laughs> right. uh, Dude, I hated them when I first started drinking them. You, now uh, it's all I like when it comes to beer. <laughs> so, <laughs> since you offered. <laughs> all right. So the Berserker from Ordock Brewing out in Marquette, we have a hopped up. Fury of orange haze and lactose run amok on clouds of Kiv that looks Russian. Kivek? <laughs> <laughs> so Amarillo hops, Simcoe hops, Mosaic hops coming in at 7.5 ABV, 50 IBUs. Uh, all right. So the lactose is going to make it kind of like a velvety smooth consistency for the most part. Like if you ever, if you taste it, I haven't tasted it yet. So shout out to velvety consistency. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that helped. That, that helped kind of, cause I, I don't like the tartness of IPAs usually, but I guess the lactose kind of, kind of smooth. Yeah. Usually with like lactose, like, like base IPAs, you know, it kind of cuts down on like that bitterness, like that yeah. piney kind of taste yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, yeah, usually. No, this is definitely an IPA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it yep. still is. Yeah. For sure. sure. Well, Giovanni we're getting a little. Bonnie, I'm sorry, by the way. Um, <laughs> I just don't. Hey, hey Buff, if, you, if you're not going to finish that, you know. We got uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, somebody uh, a little uh, underage yeah. here for that. We, we, we want to be responsible. We use our pat platform responsibly here. So, yes. Well, as we take a little <laughs> sip of this beer and try it out, we're going to play a little song for you guys while we're chilling. Um, this is a song that I've been vibing off over the last few days. It would be the brand new single out of Maxo Cream Ooh, featuring Anderson, Anderson Pac. Yeah. Yeah, the song's called The Vision, man. They sound great together on it. So here's a little bit of that while we try these beers. All right, I think that's all we can afford here. <laughs> yeah, man. This is an interesting beer, dude. Nah, man, that's wild. Super yeah, hoppy. It's, it's very, it's, it's really like, it punches you like with the pininess on the back end of it, but initially it's like kind of like, I don't want to say this, but it's just kind of creamy up front. Like, with the consistency. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, just since you guys are here and we've been doing we, these episodes by ourselves for a while, so we figured out there's no non-sexual way it's to describe like, drinking beer. It really isn't. <laughs> nah, man, it's wild I'll, listening to Anderson Pack now because it's like when I first heard him, I heard him off of uh, Dre's album when he dropped Compton. That Compton, yeah. And it was just like, oh man, this dude is dope. And he had like 10,000 followers on Facebook. And I was like, man, this dude is amazing. Like, this, yep. this is crazy. And then literally just overnight after Malibu dropped, just blew Have you the seen fuck him live yet? Up. 
Yeah, oh yeah. I saw, oh, I dude, he's amazing. Like, he's what, just 2018? so good. We were I was supposed to go to a yep, metric we sure were. <laughs> drop my ticket when I saw that him and Eminem were playing back to back. And I was like, oh, oh no, man. well, uh, I'm going to go to Bonnaroo instead and go see Anderson Pack. <laughs> yep. Watch this man rap and play drums. It's and amazing. Time, <laughs> get up, rap, it's like yep. such a drum. high level of performance, we, uh, too. Like, I saw him at Oak, was at Oakland University. It was him, Thundercat, and Jesse Reyes oh, on tour. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It was so good. Jesse Reyes is slept Woo. on. For real. For real. Yeah. No, that, oh, man. It's kind of crazy to me. Anderson Pack, I feel like, makes the best type of shit that I want to hear. Like, it's it's got, like, little bits of everything. You know, it's got, like, you know, like, Call back to like 60s, 70s music with Dog. like Silk the Sonic. smooth, like, oh my Silk god, Sonic Silk with, Sonic. Oh, oh my god, when that I wrote this on this Twitter year. yesterday because he's about to put out this new single with, I can't remember the girl's name, but it's one of the big pop stars, right? Mm-hmm. It's gonna be featured Anderson Pack. I was like, I wanna know how much Anderson's charging for a feature right now because mm-hmm. he is guaranteed to make your song better, like, no oh, matter yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> Silk Sonic track. brought back the taco meat music. Straight you know? up. Like, <laughs> Again, it's like, you know, when, you, remember, you remember when you was a kid and you used to walk in? to your parents listen to some music it's like this is grown folk music yep. he make grown folk there music. you go straight up man it really like it has that like motown love that we love around here anyways because it's what we all grew up to and shit so yeah i i wish they weren't doing the vegas residency though like i want them to tour that silk for sonic real. shit i need to see that oh, here that's probably track. coming you know i gotta work you know atlantic and everything <laughs> for sure although they're probably making so much money doing that vegas residency <laughs> it's probably stupid but uh, right. anyways, yeah, Let's this beer's it. good. I like the Berserker. Shout out to Or Doc. Doc. Oh, we Where's it out of again? What about uh, Maxo? We're not gonna talk about Maxo. No, oh, man. Yo, so, yo, 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 Maxo, bro. Ma- Way of the World was probably one of my top ten albums of last year. I just it was definitely it in my top yeah. ten last year for sure. Maxo, he needs to get a little. I, I think he's going to get bigger. Mm-hmm. I think he's super talented. Mm-hmm. I really love that album. Uh, that one and the Brandon Banks one. I think before yeah, Brandon that, Banks. that was that was a crazy album too. Yeah. I like. Uh, um, I, you know what I really like about Maxo is what? like he's Storytelling, definitely man. from the street cloth of shit, but he's like a poetic gangster. You know, yeah. he's he so glorified. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, like, back, he's yeah. so yeah. great. He has at, like, like that describing story. Uh, I it's like that it. same thing like Vince Staples almost. Like, yeah, he's just yeah. really good. Yeah. Or Schoolboy yeah. Q is another one like yeah. that that just doesn't glorify it, but yeah. at the same time, like you know, this is what's going on. This is yeah. what happens. West Side yeah. Boogie. West Side Boogie. West Boogie's another one like that. That was my album last week. More Black Superheroes, man. I love that West Side Boogie project. That's phenomenal. More Black Superheroes. Yep. 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 Man, it's sad that like you know that's not the music that gets pushed out. Like that's the stuff that needs to get pushed out. But it's like, yeah, it's not going. That's not what mm-hmm. we're gonna do right now. No. I I do love that there is this um you know charge of popular rappers that are starting to talk about things that are like have more depth and meaning to it. Like I, that, yeah, I cannot stop sure. listening to that Kendrick album. Like, and oh I still haven't God. made it all the way through without crying when I get to. Mother I Isaac, sober, like, Isaac, I, I, hold, wait, 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 I need, wait, I need wait, to ask wait. this man, Isaac, so, how do you feel about it now? You were telling me you were listening to it two songs at a time the last time I spoke to you. How do you feel about it now? All right, look. I, so, I'm, so, when you, when you, tell me, come on. I'm the biggest Kendrick fan in the world, all right? Uh-huh. I mean, I've been with Kendrick ever since I was probably like 11 or 12. Damn, had my mind spinning, especially like the song Fear, mm-hmm. being able to relate to him on like, when he's talking about his mom and get your ass off the couch, all that. I mean, mm-hmm. I've been able to relate for 10 forever, but when it comes to this new album, for me, for me, it's not it. Wow. Man. Okay. It's not but it. But I think it's the age thing. It's yeah, I think so too. I think, um, I mean, if you look at the progression, he, you know, he started, he was talking about himself as a young person, and then he went through like some some levels of spiritual awakening, yeah. being a damn, and this, that, and the third, and he is talking about how hard it is to kind of balance that in terms of fame in this project. He's famous and that has caused a lot of problems for him. Yeah. And he's kind of at a point where he's like, this is my truth and I got to live it. I got to deal with it or I'm not going to be able to move forward. So, you know, I think you got to be at a, not to, you know, obviously, you know. A certain level of maturity. There's a certain level of maturity. You got to go through some shit. You got to be done took some L's. You know, actually, I'm glad you're here because I have a question for you. So, albums or singles? At, albums, at your age, albums. like, because I feel like a lot of times, like in the TikTok era with things like that, a lot of people want these like short, like digestible songs right. and stuff like They're that. Like two right. minutes. Gotta, <laughs> but I, Isaac is a different yeah. type. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, okay. Let me Thank explain. You. Let me tell I, you. I appreciate tell that. By yeah. the way, yeah. you gotta understand something about me. Even though I'm what 16, I'm not. 
I, I feel like I was born in the wrong generation. Even though that that's that's great for me because I'm gonna bring a different sound to this generation, something that's unique. I'm someone who's able to look back at, like you said, the album era. Man, I love. We talking all the way back '90s. I love only built for Cuban links. I love. <laughs> I, I love. I haven't I love heard of. <laughs> I have not heard a bar from you yet, and I'm I already excited. I like you, man. I, I haven't heard a bar from you, and I'm. <laughs> That's, that's what I'm saying. I, I love Mob Deep, the infamous. I love Ooh, albums. I already when, love this when, kid. When you put the albums together and you get a one cohesive sound, I mean, those singles, they come and go. Like, they hot for one summer. But you got to remember, I also love when the baby was hot with Thunder for Vegas in, like, 2019, and he was coming out with, like, Vibes and Bop and Ashley. I love that, too. So I'm not going to deny one part you. of myself for the other. I'm a... I, I'm someone in this position. I'm able to see both of the best worlds. Be a student of the game. Exactly. You know, like actually learn. Exactly. Yeah. Can, I, can yeah. I say this about Isaac? I, so Isaac came along during the, for, the early part of the second part of the second season of Formula Seven Three Four, and what struck me was there is maturity, but there's also research. He mm -hmm. does his research, and it comes through his music. It comes through his knowledge, but it also comes through as an MC. You can tell that he's taking in a lot of different people's kind of styles and yeah. things and been able to craft his own already at his age. Mm -hmm. So he's been amazing to be a That's part of this That's what I keep saying, man. Like, I sat there watching what Isaac and Sano were doing, them working together, Shout and I'm to like, man, if y'all keep Sano. that same momentum that you got right now and keep doing, like, because if I had that same momentum when I was your age, dog, I'd be torn. Like, you know, like, I see that in you guys. And all you got to do is, like, while you got the time right now, while you're young, you ain't got a, all the pressures of the world as an adult on you, take that time and just craft it. Build on it. Because, like, now you got the world in front of you. And once you get done, like I said, you got the opportunities yeah. all around you. Yeah. And from the outside looking in, from someone like me who's a giant fan of music, it really warms my heart to hear you say shit like you love the infamous by Mob Deep and you love Only Built for Cuban Links. Because I think first and foremost, before you can be a great artist yourself, you got to be a fan of the shit first. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, you got to be a student of the craft that you're into before anyone else is going to fuck with your sound. Because like, I feel like that's how you find... like. Um, I feel like everyone kind of sounds like their favorite rappers in the beginning, you know what I mean? When you're trying to figure out your own sound. And if you don't have that to pull from, I think some of the laziest shit that really drives me nuts is when you see young dudes in interviews that are like, oh, I don't really fucking care about that. Like, they'll ask yeah, him about, yeah. like, Tupac or something like that, and they'll just, like, kind of, like, have this mentality where it's cool to say they don't give a fuck. And I'm Bruh, like, I, I, was don't, in I don't think that's cool. I was in Cloud <laughs> Chasey and stuff like that, yeah. I was in Detroit last week, and I was talking to somebody about some of the people I've opened up for. I was like, yeah, I've opened up for KRS one he was like, who is that i was like <laughs> oh, oh my god, god. krs has dropped an album by the way <laughs> wait what krs has dropped an album <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, like I, I just found out this that uh, they were talking about it on ebro in the morning the other day uh krs got a new album out and it's got some crazy fucking features and collaborations on it so came i gotta get into it when it just came out it, like no. just came out like oh, a, okay. like maybe like two weeks ago oh, oh shit yeah. <laughs> so i got yeah. i haven't even I, listened to it yet so. <laughs> yeah no i gotta get into can, it so can I, can I say this real quick i had the, the privilege of um going to see anita baker Man. Was that last night? And, and it was it yeah. was two nights ago. And listen, I just want to tell people who are making music, do not forsake the importance of the understanding of music theory, the understanding yes. of the, the technical, the fundamentals, because that is really a separating factor. And it's becoming more and more separating between Music that is, you know, I, I guess you would consider it to be like commodified and commercial, like neatly packaged mm -hmm. versus people who are really, really making um, true magic through their music. And it was just, man, I mean, the hits, she just had, you know, just just hit after hit after hit. And what I what it reminded me of is the fact that music decorates time for people. Yes. Right. And so for me, all I saw while I was listening to her music was childhood riding my bike, and my dad slammed back Seville, this, that, and the third. So just concentrate on making timeless music that means things to people, man. And I think that you'll find your way. I that's that's to, to your point, beat. to that, I actually saw Elton John a few days before there you go. that. Yeah, See? which was exactly. crazy to me. Like, mind you, I... Elton loves hip hop, by the way. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. I love when like the o, like the OG artists actually really embrace like the younger. Like I know George Clinton, how we spoke earlier. Oh was, like, man, George Clinton embraces about it. that. But like just 
timeless hits with Elton John, man. I was thinking about, like, he opened up with Benny and the Jets. It was cool. Like, that, the visuals, like, his band was on point. Just everybody just singing along the songs. Which, like, just, like, people like that has been around, like, 50, 60 years. Which shit, Elton was just sampled yeah. on that last Tribe album, on uh, Solid Wall of Sound. He just shit. did a track with just Dua did a Lipa. Track <laughs> with the Gorillas <laughs> yeah. on their Yo, recent I album. Don't know. Yeah, it's just bro. amazing. Like, I'm, I'm so excited to see the girls in October. I'm oh, so excited. I, I gotta get and tickets so to that, excited. dude. I that really is, gotta get tickets to that because I, the shit that David Alvarez does. The girls are my favorite musical group because it's just like they, they literally make every type of music with their music. It goes from hip hop, rock, psychedelic, yep. whatever. Like, I love what it is. Then it goes back to what Rod was just saying about, like, you know, that music theory. It's just like when you see it, it's a whole experience. It's not yes. just it's yes. not just you're listening to music, you're watching somebody yeah. play their music. It's a whole thing. Yeah. And I'm and so this dude. But I, I think it's studying overall. Like, I even go back to when, you know, Buff and them perform with, you know, Athletic Mike Lee. Shout out to them uh, earlier in the month. You have to really, really practice your craft. You have to really, really engage yourself in mastering whatever your square is and that's what she came out she sang songs that was 20 years old she interacted with her band a certain way she interacted with her background singers a certain way she knew what to do exactly with the crowd and i think that we have to really go back to that and i think anybody who's interested in developing people musically for this industry benefits by teaching people how to do that mm -hmm. um and yeah. you know what? You know what else I was gonna add to that is I think um, hip hop has always played such an important role to some of these younger or older soul artists mm -hmm. and R and B artists of the past because of sampling, and yeah. sampling bridges generational gaps. Hip hop yeah. made the entire copyright system. <laughs> like, yeah, straight they up. were like, you had, you had all these old dudes from back in the day. Like, wait a minute, you got these young cats taking my music and remaking it, and I'm not getting money from it. Yo. But like, that look at that right show here. Anita Baker just did recently where I can't remember if she was in L.A. or New York, but Chance the Rapper was in the crowd, um, Lil was Wayne was in the crowd, in Vegas, and she Vegas, she individually called them both out and was like, listen, Lil Wayne has been like a huge help to my career for yeah. the longest time, Chance helped me get my masters back, like all this shit, I'm just like, oh, wow. that's hip-hop out here. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> so I think all that shit's really cool too, man, so shout out to Anita Baker, shout, shout out to Chance him, and, yes. yeah. and Lil shout Wayne. Shout out to the dude playing bass during that concert. Oh, was he nice? <laughs> Stand up? <laughs> By the way. Shout out to the bassist, man. <laughs> just sit back. He was just, he had his chair. He was just, I mean, and not missing. Shout out to all, like, the musicians that sit in the background. Hell yeah. Like, behind the headliners, yes. you know, the nationalists, man, behind I'm gonna find Amsterdam. That I'm going to find that bass player. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, let's reel this thing back in a little bit, all because right. I want to know a little bit about what? the Washtenaw chapter of Brothers Keepers, right. and I would like you guys to tell us what it's all so about. That I'll deter that to... Mr. Buff One right here. <laughs> yeah, so what I like, when I was doing research on the actual, like, My Brother's Keeper, the Obama program, it was 2014 it was started, I want to say, yeah, right? correct. And it was pretty much like a call to action for mentorship in yeah, the community. For I, black, black, yeah. black and brown men specifically, yeah. So um, Obama pretty much just said, hey, if you are a black man in whatever community you live in, I'm kind of... I'm gonna call you the task to to step up, step up to the plate, and uh, be more supportive of our young black and brown men in our communities, whatever community you live in. So now there's about 250 My Brother's Keeper chapters uh, wow. across the country. Um, and Washington was actually one of the first uh, counties to sign on uh, in 2015, um, and yeah. So I'm the director of the Washington County chapter. Um, I've been in this role for a little over two and a half, almost th three years now. Um, what uh, what brought you to want to be a part of this? Actually, um, it started with my friend Shamar Heron, um, who I play basketball with. Um, we we one day he was just like, "Hey, I'm part of this thing called Washington on My Brother's Keeper," and I had heard of the national like initiative, like the big net, you know, the Obama Foundation and. The, MBK Alliance, but I didn't even know there was a Washington County chapter. Um, this is back in 2018. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, and I've been here, you know, pretty much my whole life, and I had never heard of the Washington County chapter. So I think that was kind of his impetus for reaching out to me. And I think around the same time he reached, or they, you know, Rod came around the same time as me. Mm -hmm. Another partner who's a part of Formula Seven Three Four uh, with my brother, uh, my brother's keeper is Mike Henry. I think we all started coming around 
uh, watch uh, WNBK around the same time. Mm-hmm. I think they knew they needed some new energy, some new ideas, um, like just some fresh thoughts on on how to you know take WNBK to a next level. And so we started coming around to these breakfasts. Um, every second Saturday of the month, we do these uh, breakfasts called 50 Strong Breakfasts, okay. which is essentially uh, black and brown men getting together, breaking bread, mm-hmm. sharing ideas, resources, community building, um, just uplifting each other, having fun, laughing, learning. you know, learning. Yeah. Intergenerational, all ages from three to 73, you know, we get together uh, once a month. Um, but the breakfasts are open to anybody. Anybody can come, black, brown, white, woman, doesn't matter. But, you know, the black and brown male voice is definitely centered and prioritized. But anybody can come. So we started going, going to the breakfast. Um, me and him started talking about how we could do some music-related stuff with young people. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, they asked me to uh, be on the steering committee, uh, along with Rod and Mike and some new, some new people. Fast forward again, there was a woman in the leadership role. She quit. And the leadership opened up. I went out for the, the job. I got it. And so I knew one of the first things I wanted to do was, was, was a music project. Um, and that's essentially how Formula 734 was born. We wanted to use music kind of as a tool to get young people um, in a safe space to create opportunities to talk about what's going on in their lives personally, in their communities or schools, whatever is affecting their life, anything uh, pertinent to them that they wanted to express, create a safe space uh, to have those conversations and then take those conversations and put them in the song form. Um, and that's, yeah, that's essentially how Formula 734 was born. That's awesome, man. That really makes me happy to hear, um, especially as as people that talk and critique uh, a lot about hip-hop. And, you know, it's, it's something that I don't, it's not that I don't like this about hip-hop, because I do like that it's like a sport and it's very competitive in by nature. But uh, so much of it is founded on, I'm better than you. You know what I'm saying? So, but like, especially in like a smaller developmental way, I love like seeing community come together and be like, oh, we could actually all prosper more if we work together with each other and help each other build. That's how you build. That's how you build like a sustainable community. Mm -hmm. I I truly, I truly, I think I always go back to uh, the most deaf quote when I think it was on black, uh, black on both sides when he he was talking about somebody asking him what the state of hip hop was and he was like, you know, people treat hip hop like it's some, you know, what do you say, like monster in the in the woods or something. Like hip hop is a reflection of the world we live in. It. Mm-hmm. And so hip hop can be several things. Just like black men can be several things. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it can be competitive. It can be very misogynistic and violent. Mm-hmm. It could also be very empowering. It could also be very uh, informing and educational spiritual. and spiritual. Mm. It could be all those things. And as as someone who is a white person from the outside in who's always loved hip hop, it's taught me to be more empathetic. Mm. Yeah. So, yep. yep. Rod, I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like this might be a full circle moment because I remember back when I was in middle school, there was a group called Men mm-hmm. back in the day. So what I guess is the... I guess, how do you feel being a part of this now compared to that then and, like, the comparisons? and It it It, it is coming full circle. And, and truth be told, it always has been a target of mine. I just couldn't figure out how to melt those two worlds I was involved in. So even when you were in my class or, you know, around the school when I was there, I was always doing hip-hop. I was always creating hip-hop. I was the, you know, I was the teacher that was DJing, the dances or making sure the DJ was there. He said he was a cool <laughs> teacher. <laughs> 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 playing, you know, playing yeah. beats in class while kids was working and this, that, and the third. And so, you know, at night I was leaving and I was doing engineering in Detroit, you know. And so I continued to try to fight for it and figure it out. And I knew that not only was there a skill set that could be developed through hip hop, because hip hop is a cognitive process, the creation of it. Writing songs, what um, Eric does. All of those things are processes that transfer to other areas of career-based skills or things that can get us better in touch with our mental state, all kinds of stuff. So eventually, as an administrator, I got a chance to start a music production program where kids were making beats every day, and I couldn't figure out how to be the assistant principal in a school where I had so many different duties and jobs. And shout out to Travis Bean. He did a great job with the music production program that we built at River Rouge. 
But I, I always thought that it, it there was something that could be bigger from it as well. And he continued that growth even after I, I moved away. So being able to kind of be on the flip side to be able to make the focus music and then be able to build in those other elements is something that's been fantastic. That's what's It's up, been man. a great opportunity. So being able to see it from the flip side and empowering the hip-hop side of it first and then being able to say, these are the career-based skills, these are the educate the educable moments that you might need, so on and so forth. So it's like you get to teach one lane through another, knowing you gotta kinda push it up to build all of it up to Absolutely. One. And that's actually yeah, that's a really good way to look at that. Absolutely. I can't stress yeah. how important that is too, because especially the, you know, in Detroit, there's so much um, there's little money in education in Detroit. So, you know, they always cut funds from the arts and the music programs first. And it's such a detriment to, you know, like creative expression and and, um, and outlets that people want to achieve things in, you know, because there's so many, cla- especially for me, there was so much shit in, cl- in school that I took where I'm like, I'm not going to be using like LGO stat and any of this shit. I would have rather the been Pythagorean a- theorem. <laughs> <laughs> squared plus B squared equals C squared. Unless I will never an, use this. Unless you are an engineer, that makes no sense. Well, to me. I just put yeah. Pythagorean theorem in a rap. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. I love it. I love it. But but all of those things and all those concepts, they're means to an end to mm-hmm. a degree. And yeah. you know, some of it has varying levels of relevance based on where your career is. But the connection there's there's always been a difficult time making the connection between those kind of things and what the kids experience and go through and like mm-hmm. every day. So if hip hop is that bridge or hip hop can be the lens through which we give kids the opportunity to see the world, why not use it? Um, I, that's just the way that I feel. Yeah, I'm even seeing it now in like the the content of the like children's TV shows that they're putting out. Like yeah. Ludacris has this Karma's World show out on Netflix now. Del- where it's like, I'm like, All right, it's literally so Del- talking about Homo like, Sapiens <laughs> like is in this show. My boy keeps sending me clips from it. I've never watched a show. It's called Craig in the Creek. Mm-hmm. And okay. It's just like Del the Funky Homo Sapien is constantly in this show <laughs> rapping and like spitting some philosophical stuff to all these kids and stuff. Yeah. I'm just like, this is wild to me because again, it's just like nobody like nobody would have known who this man was. 15 right. That's years insane ago. to me. Didn't, so isn't Del the Ho- like Del the Hom- uh, Funky Homo Sapien? He's in like the biggest vocabulary like. In one of them. Hip-hop. Right. He's one of them. No, okay. the biggest vocabulary. Rock, I think. Yep. It's, it's a rock. rock. Okay. All right. yeah. but this Which gap, is one of the best live shows I've ever seen. But the, I've never seen this, him live. That'd be this, crazy. But the cultural gap that you see in hip hop versus, you know, hip hop being dismissed by education is evidence of history. Mm-hmm. You know, because jazz was looked at a certain way. Yeah. Blues was looked at a certain way. Yep. Um, African American literature was looked at a certain way throughout history, throughout 20th century history and mm-hmm. so forth. So it's kind of the the passing along of that tradition of undermining black art and saying that it is anti it's not intellectual mm-hmm. you know so that's kind of the work that we're doing to kind of say bring it forward not only is it art but it is it's it's teaching entrepreneurship mm-hmm. it's teaching uh intellectual property it's teaching all kinds of different things it's pissing off fox news hosts and that always was <laughs> <my home. laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's actually quiet as it's kept. It's part of like another sexual revolution if you pay any attention. Mm-hmm. Because who is dominating in rap right now? Mm. Women. Yep. yep, very true. One hundred percent. Women and R and B artists. Yeah, and R and B from the yeah. artist standpoint. Now, when we move it into the technical side, and we move it into the production side, and we move it into the ownership side, then you're really gonna see something happen. Speaking of women in hip hop. I got to ask you guys if you've heard about this shit that Mass Appeal is doing right now. What's that? So Mass Appeal in an attempt to, you know, how obviously you can't put all these mixtapes on streaming because of sample clearance issues and how mixtapes have always been predicated on, you know, using other people's beats and shit. Mm -hmm. So Mass Appeal is doing a 10 mixtape series where each one of them grabs one producer to make, I think, five or six tracks all featuring different artists as like a small mini mixtape. The first one just came out. DJ yeah, Premier is the first per- producer. Oh God! Bless. And there's a track. <laughs> and there's a track on there that has Remy Ma and Rhapsody together. Oh my um, God! Yeah, and it is fucking cold. <laughs> it is That's really dope. good. I need, That's dope. I need that. Yeah, but it, I need it, that mixtape. It's it's important that people think outside of the box in terms of putting out music. Now. Mm-hmm. Like the customary routes are folding. You know, yep. it's like they're like literally curling up. 
So doing things like that, doing things like Formula 734 that have these nuances to them is very valuable. Yeah. You know? See, yeah, it's I just really saw hard to like get mixtapes out nowadays when yep. you can't stream them. Like, because everybody exactly. uses streaming services, so it's just like you, nobody's gonna go to livemixtapes.com yeah. anymore. Nobody's doing that. I mean, Bandcamp still trying to kick out too. Like, shout out to Bandcamp. By yeah, the way. yeah, for real. Yeah. Shout out to Bandcamp. Yeah. Like, man, I love Bandcamp. That's where I got all like our original music when I was doing approachal minority stuff and insane industries. Like, you guys, 10 so years ago, the Formula like, Seven Three Four album originally came out on Bandcamp first, right? Yep, that's correct. what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Bandcamp, one of the only platforms out there that are actually like uh doing shit like that's for the artists yeah, too you know bank camp fridays yeah. trying to get them some money you, you know could donate saying? like again yeah. you could sit there and you could set your prices like hey just donate and buy the album whatever you feel like you want to do it or if you want to do a mixtape or anything like band camp opens that up should we yep. i feel like this is a great segue should we talk about the new album or should we talk about the uh the old album first Cause oh. i want because i want to talk about like how that one came about and then how we got into the new one well, I guess uh, we start with the old one first because, as you guys heard to start the podcast off, we started a little bit off that first Formula Seven Three Four album, yeah. which Rod uh, didn't want to f- didn't want to sit there and do the hook. He's like, "No, nah, we're gonna have somebody else do that." So, <laughs> how, I want to know how this album came about. Like, first of all, a reference. All right, so um, as I as I stated earlier, um, I just want to give a big shout out to Washington My Brothers Keeper for. Yes. Empowering me, giving me the freedom to create programming um, that I think would be beneficial for our young people in Washtenaw County. Um, so we got our CLR sports program for young K, K through 8 key kids, um, Community Leadership Revolution. Uh, shout out Justin Harper and Bilal Saeed. Uh, we got uh, Young Men of Purpose program at Ipsy Middle School. Um, shout out to YCS, Ipsy Community Schools. And we got Formula 734. And so um, I think at the, yeah, at the time when I started, when I first started coming around My Brother's Keeper, the really only like solid programmatic thing was the breakfast. Mm-hmm. And I think they recognized, all right, we need to, we need to ramp it up. And so I just had these ideas and I, you know, I connected with different members of my steering committee on how to make these things become a reality. So Formula 734. Um, essentially, yeah, like I said, it started really with me, a conversation with me and Rod. Like, I knew I wanted to take some of the things that I picked up from the, my experience uh, as music coordinator at the Neutral Zone uh, Teen Center in downtown Ann Arbor, take those and kind of um, kind of remix it and put a different spin on some of the work that I had done, you know, working with young uh, people who are uh, court-involved young people, justice-involved young people, um, and, and, and taking some of the elements of the work I did there and expanding on it and really, really being able to, I, I just don't, I don't recall seeing too many opportunities for teenage black and brown young men to talk about what is affecting them. Like just unapolog- unapologetically, unfiltered, like what's going on in your life. And that's that was the main like point of emphasis I wanted to create with Formula 734. Like we have these circles um, right here in Grove and the circles are just a safe space to talk about anything, whether it be relationships with women or money or depression, trauma. Um, And so that was, that was the goal, but I knew, I knew once. So, so I'll give you a little backstory. So there was a documentary that was already in the works with uh, Washington My Brother's Keeper before I got the job. And the documentary was essentially trying to get the perspectives of young black men in the community about how they feel uh, they are being supported or not supported. And without getting into the, to the details, um, the the documentary, they showed a little clip at actually the first time I went to a My Brother's Keeper event. I think that might have been Rise too. Mm-hmm. It was... Uh, Excuse me, that's that IPA talking. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out or doc. <laughs> um, oh man. The documentary um <coughs> it kind of rubbed some people the wrong way. Um I think I think um they just couldn't handle the unfiltered <laughs> perspectives of some of these young people in regards to It's hard group. to be black in America. It's like it's accept true. it. Well, like, and it, you know, it's, yeah, go, go ahead. I was say like I feel like 
it wants you they want to perceive you in a certain light almost in a way so when you go against that grain it's like okay what the fuck are you doing here mm-hmm. I'm sorry I don't want to swear but like what are you actually doing here so yeah. so I saw what they had and I was like all right I think there's a way we could do this like well, there's a way we can still get the real true thoughts of young black and brown men um them telling their perspective their honest truth um, but still present it in a way that is not uh, alienating or putting people off or, you know what I'm saying? Putting so, people on blast. Basically. Putting people on blast, yeah. So I was like, we can do that through music, I feel. It might be easier to do that through expressing yourself through music. And so that's that's what I wanted to do. And so I started talking to Rod about it. He comes from a similar background of music and education, and we just kind of combine our ideas and resources, and we... Just started putting it together. We started calling on people like TJ Greggs, uh, TJ Stewart, True Classic. Some, you know, the first one we knew pretty much most. Well, I knew everybody um, um, in the first cohort, so that made it a little easier. That made it a little more comfortable, um, and you could kind of tell in the filming of the circles that there was some trust that had already kind of been there. Even though, even though not everybody else knew each other, but everybody knew me or Rod for the most part. Buff this, Bone was a influential individual. Like I said, we I had listened to a mixtape as him as a kid, and I was like, when I heard the opportunity to actually like, oh, I'm gonna make music with Buff. Oh yeah, let's <laughs> let's jump on this. What do you mean? <laughs> so yeah, so um, that's that's pretty much how it came about. You know, we got uh, again to the support of Washington My Brothers Keeper, to the support of Washington our Intermediate School District. Um, there was funding already set aside to do this work, so I didn't have to like scramble and try to find money to do it. It was there; the resources were there. We had the connection to Grove through Rod, and it it's was kind of all filled yeah, together. Yeah, it was just organic, and you know now I think we have some really uh, a, a beautiful, powerful thing in motion. We just wrapped up this, the recording of the second one. We're trying to get that out soon, so. That feels important too, and not to keep it. bringing. I always, I always reference Kendrick. I knew it was going to happen after <laughs> this shit came out a million times. But like something you were just talking about, kind of hit me. Um, it was one of the topping points, and one of the standout songs for me on his album was a song called "Father Time," where he talks about mm. how young black men are raised to be tough and to not show their sensitive sides and to, uh, you know, kind of suppress that and push that away because the world's not going to fucking pay you any favors, and like. He talks about how important it is to be able to have some kind of outlet where you can express your sensitive side and, you know, be yourself unapologetically. So, like, hearing you talk about, like, putting those circles together where kids can talk and, you know, get shit off their chest is pretty important. It is. And and even when you talk about that song, I think one thing that we've really tried to work towards is really centering different narratives. That's one of the goals of the program overall. And even that Father Time record, Although he talks about being raised a certain way and his father being hard on him and his father not allowing him to show emotion, he also talks about I understand why, why he right. was because that the way. world's not going to do why, that for you right. either. So right, yeah. and it's it's actually helped me in some ways, but I also had to grow and sprout in my own way. So I think when you talked about the media project beforehand, it was as as though. You know, like kind of looking looking at things from 5,000 feet and saying, we're going to interview you, but what comes out of it will essentially confirm what we already know versus allowing them to take the lead in the stories that they want to tell and then just crafting everything else around their mm-hmm. stories. Exactly. Um, I think that's what kind of set the project apart. So the documentary came before the album, essentially, right? No. No, okay. Like, same time, All right. right? The album so came yeah. first. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, the yeah. album came first, and then what? We, like, we, we initially made most of the music first, and then we continued on with filming because we had Fred shout out to Fred because he was out here doing everything shout out Fred yeah, yeah. Real. Shout out. <laughs> we was out here he was sitting there we were doing like minor interviews and stuff and like doing recording he's in the background recording what we're doing but initially we just we made music first like that was the first and foremost thing was like we got to get these songs out what are we going to talk about because we start off every meeting for formula 734 with a meeting like all right so what are we going to discuss today as black men like so what are the issues that's going on in your life right now? 
what's going on that we could discuss about how we're going to craft this into our music right now that we're going to create right now. Right. And then create a topic. And like they said, if we have that open space, which a lot of young black you don't get don't that. have yeah. that at all. Because you... Like, when I hear some of the stories that some of these kids have gone through, it's like you're a 16 year old kid and you've gone through this much in your life already. Right. It's just like it puts my problems in perspective. It's just like, all right, well, you know, if they're still going, I got to keep trekking. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, like my problems probably aren't that bad because it could have been worse. Like, yeah, you know, and it's some cornball shit to say, but it's so true how much music saves lives for people, man. Like, Perfect. like there is not a person on the planet that can't relate to something that makes you feel like you're not alone you know what i'm saying like like oh my god this song makes me realize like there's other people going through what i'm going through right now it puts things in perspective for you in the long run like okay i'm not alone in all of this and Mm -hmm. stuff like that and then going back to your point like you guys creating that like community and that safe space so people can kind of get that off their chest is like super rare and super dope and and it's really hard for young men like i said especially a lot of people like because you keep it built up you know and then that's how we we talked about this last week. Shout out to Arctic Circle, by the way, for putting mm-hmm. up with rants last week. <laughs> yeah. But but we talk about like how trauma produces other trauma. We were talking about like how that, like yeah. we were talking about the R. Kelly thing, and we were talking mm-hmm. about how like we were glad that these women got their day in court, but we're also we weren't excited about it because like it to me it's like if you've seen the story of R. Kelly, he was sexually abused as a kid too. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's yeah, just a repeated this normal, cycle. Yeah. So it, like it doesn't make me feel good that you know he's, he's, getting, he's spending getting the rest of his life, life, life in jail. Like, like it sucks, but it sucks. You know, but but, it, but I mean, it's important. It's, I'm yeah. glad that Though you know he should. Yeah. 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 Of, course, <laughs> yeah. of course, of course, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. course. Can I ask this? Like Isaac was here for the second one. I know we're going to talk about the second one, but in terms of being an active participant in the process, you know, in those circles and those discussions, can you talk at all about like? how it made you feel or definitely when you said for example it could have been worse you're hearing these other stories man i I met people through this program formula seven through four and i'm just i'm still trying to look out for them to this day and i I had just met them like we would go there what like seven Mm -hmm. it would be after school everybody would be drudging in there you know everybody tired we like ah but like again that's what's so important with the music aspect because even though we tired we all like, dang, we get an opportunity. They're giving us, we in Grove right now, they're giving us this opportunity to rap in front of this mic and actually like exhibit some intellectual behavior in a way that's actually enjoyable for us besides like just writing down on a paper all day. We get to make music. Like who doesn't love to make music? Right. That's what all these guys are here for. And those circles, especially if you want to focus in on that, we had, you, you didn't talk about the guest speakers at all yet. I mean, right. we had active community members come in and Talk to us about st- football coach coming. Yeah. I didn't even realize it was my own football. Coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, the circles were just amazing, and like you said, you said the first group, uh, you you knew everyone in the first group, but this second group is that's not the case, is it? Correct. And right. now, I mean, there's no way you can say you don't know everyone right. in this second group. Right. Like this time around. As the weeks went on and on, it was just more and more opening up. And especially that, again, the music aspect, when you lay a, a beat in front of somebody with some bass and like a like one of those soulful samples, how can you not pour it your heart? Some and you hear it on those, and you hear yeah. it on those studio monitors exactly, and you're like, mm, exactly, exactly. sounds good. So then, <laughs> like, I mean, I didn't hear some stuff from the other guys. I'm not going to say no names, but I didn't hear some stuff from the other guys and like, it, people have heard stuff from me and then... I mean, we just bring it back to the circles after we talk about it. Like, man, you really went through that? And, like, that really happened to you? Like, for real? People talking about everything that's going on. That same censorship that you were saying before that not putting people on blast. I mean, you got it right. This this music allows... We're not putting it on blast. We're just telling telling it how it is. It the makes music. it more digestible it, in exactly. a way so people can kind of, like, hear you. I'm like, okay, this is, you know... It's it's almost like a way more like way to process it exactly in a way. yeah, and that's why again we was talking about the essence of hip hop and what it is. People are gonna hate yeah. on it now, and people have been hating on it because it's another form of black music. But in the end, this is one of the best forms of poetry there is to Straight. ever. It's exist. honest. Straight it's up. honest and genuine and pure, and that's the thing about it. Yeah, it requires honesty. Yeah, and doing episodes like this for me, I know I can't speak for E Man, but I'm pretty sure I can speak for him in this respect. Is I can't uh, speak for what, him, but I'm going to speak for him. For real, no, because I know you, you feel the same on this. Is 
one of the reasons that one of the main things that we started this podcast for was not to elevate hitters or I like as famous people. We wanted to give a voice to musicians in the community that we love and support. And this is awesome because like talking to Isaac, you know, who's 16, like that's so mind blowing to me. Like you already have like a great understanding of what should be. An and he got that's bars. Awesome. Like, <laughs> was, I can't wait to like, hear you rap. It, it was almost like, <laughs> perfect timing when we started this podcast because i think about like that year because it was september 2018 i think we started yeah it. yep uh my mom passed like january that mm-hmm. year All right, and then I was, thank you uh i was going through my own thing and i was working on be careful be safe at the time and yep. then you hit me up because we had this shared passion of just talking about music like because we had a mutual friend and it was like I always got put together and then we just always had these conversations and stuff like that and then it was like, hey, we should start a podcast. I'm like, all right, bet. Let me finish this out real quick, and I got you. September 18 comes around, we wrote that first episode, we're in your basement. Yep, straight yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> straight up. And then man. I remember, who was our first guest? Oh, I it was- uh, Breeze might have been our no, first guest. No, 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 guess. not Bree. It was, it, was, it was a beer podcast. We had uh, Christy and- Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, man. So, Holy shit. Yeah, so we run that out. Then, like, a lot of other people started catching on. That's when we started having, like, Breeze come on and stuff like that. Yeah. We had, uh, I think, we had a couple. Uh, we, had Juan a Mi- we had Juan Michael Juan on, Michael like, in the crib, on yeah, the early yeah, episodes. Juan. Like, it, it was crazy. <laughs> so then that started kind of catching on from there. And then that's when we started going to the Plymouth Rock studio. Shout out to Nick Small for that. Yep. And then it kind of just started bringing people to the studio. And that kind of opened up a lane for other people to like, yo, we got you know, these resources to come out and check us out, too. Oh, you guys want to record and, music. And so. We saw the response to Mad Podcast trying to do the same shit we were doing popped up in that time <laughs> period. Dog, no, 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 no. There was something that I showed that showed up, and it was like Beats and Brews. And I was like, all right, I'm going to listen to this. And it wasn't you guys. I was like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, so, someone, someone started just, one that was like beer. And brews, yeah, another I think that's one what that it was. was. I was or like, bro, what is was so I just want to throw this out there. I trademarked our name and I yeah. left your name completely out of pettiness. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. But no. we are legal pet- now, <laughs> like, we're good, <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> like, no. yeah, there, there, it was, there was some funny ones, man. But yo, know, it's it's all love to me, man. And like, I, I, I love it. I think like seeing like um, the response to it has been awesome to us because we get you know. I think something that sep- uh, not to just talk our shit for uh, forever. No, just the last thing I'll it, say. Talk it, talk it. Let's go, the talk one it. thing that I think it's not sets, about us right now. Dude. Well, the, the one thing that I do <laughs> think right. sets apart us as a podcast, as, a, as opposed to people that are other people that are doing it, is when we have guests on. After they've been a guest on our show, you'll see us in the crowd of their concerts because we do go out and support. We go to these shows. We're at the live yes, shows sir. every yeah, fucking like night, real. every weekend. <laughs> And we're going to support, support and show love to these people. I've too. done seven, three, four Saturdays. I've been to uh, what Yo, was shout it? Shout out what, Dave and Ziggy. What's this shit at a uh, club above? They do. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah I've, I've done that. Oh, yeah, bridging the gap. Bridging the gap. Bridging yeah. the gap. Shout out to classic. Hey, Rod, I, that might be one we have to talk about doing here. By the way, him and I have been discussing over the last few weeks of having Dave from Ziggy's on because I think that would be a hugely influential. I, I've oh, already talked it. to him about it. It's it, we, we'll get into that later. I want to oh, I yeah, talk about Mike about that. Like Dave, 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 for real, man. Shout out to that man, cause like I said, we I've been doing the I've been doing seven three four Saturdays there for what now five years almost, and it, like I said, it was just it was the opportunity. I went from Club Above doing Wild Out Wednesdays every Wednesday, which was exhausting. God, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but like to have the opportunity to do that, cause like when Ziggy's first opened up, I was like, mm, I don't know how I feel about this. You know, it was like, oh, the new hip place that's gonna be in there. And then we got in there, and like Dave and Joe and everybody who's in there, it's like they're the coolest people, and they 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 want us to do. They give us all free reign to do whatever we want to yeah. do. Yeah, fully and embrace Dave, the shit. Man, I cannot say how much. I can't say enough good things about Dave and Joe. For to be real. honest with you, and during the so heart of flat the out, like how they pivoted. Uh, I'm so I'm glad they made it through COVID. COVID. Oh my uh, yeah, god, how they pivoted fear. was amazing on that COVID. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But like I, I'll, just the platform they give to local artists to me is just mm-hmm. insane to me. Like I compare it, and I've said this on the podcast before. I compare it to like the CBGB of like the Washington County area, or even like the like, hip hop shop yeah, back oh, in the, the hip hop shop. It's crazy, man. Like I said, because like I said, I got voted best open mic in Washington County in 2018. Yeah. And it was just like, like I wouldn't have that opportunity without that. And like I said, I get to see all these new artists that come out 
every month. And it's just like, they get blown away when they're just like, oh, wait, I, I don't have to pay to get on your show? No, you make money. Literally, like, <laughs> you get to make money. Top, I don't want your money. I one just of my door traffic. <laughs> top three favorite shows I ever played there as an artist was at Ziggy's. And it was during a snowstorm. And it was like, Oh, album release party when I did Be Careful, Be Safe. That was fun. Ah, that shit. That was a really yeah. fun night. Yeah, Neil was there for that one. Like, that was a fun night. And then ever since then, like me and Dave have been like, hey, you get you know carpet carte blanche here. And like <laughs> everybody <laughs> in Ziggy's... <laughs> one thing I noticed about there, because it was during the height of the pandemic that we went there, you know, things were starting to open back up, but shit was a little iffy, so that was like one of the first performances. There's just a respect level in Ziggy's too. Everybody yeah, in that motherfucker was wearing a mask. Every yeah. single and, person. And that was the thing. No. Like when we <laughs> first went back, when we first went back in January, that's how we started off. It was like, you know, you gotta wear a mask to come in. Mm -hmm. And it was just nobody gave a complaint about it. They right. were just like, Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Grabbed a mask from the door and just continued on with the night. They were just right. like, yo, I'm just happy to be able to come do this again. Cause again, I only threw two different shows back in twenty, what was it, twenty 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 one. Like I did the that was when um Washington was open and they just had the outdoor stage. Yeah. And you can't charge for that because it's just open street. So it was just like, well, we're doing just shows for the people. So we did Juneteenth and then we did a second one later on that month. And I was just like, man, I can't wait to get back inside. So it was just like the minute Dave was like, hey, you got to wear a mask, come in. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I do not care as long as we can come back inside and we can throw shows again. And I was like, the fact that they survived that man, through that entire mess. Yep. He, they he, pivoted beautifully. Him and Joe have pivoted beautifully during that. They opened the store up and stuff like that. It's, oh, I love how they had, were doing artist the merch, grotto, too. Right, the beer grotto. Like At that time, I was working for Eastern Market, too, so I definitely sold them some beer from there. So <laughs> shut up that, but like... <laughs> But like how they got that like done, man, was just so it was so dope, and, so dope. and it still made it like even more like a local scene too, because they were selling artists merch there, they were doing the beer there, they were doing like it was it was crazy. It's just so, such a low yeah. key and tight knit spot, and I I love that very much. Like I said, it's just like it's not a big venue. It's just yeah. like if you know about Ziggy's, you know, you know about, about it, Ziggy's, yeah. and you've been there, and you're like, man, I like Ziggy's. Yeah. <laughs> Last thing like, I want to bring up before we finally switch into something old, something new, because we are running a little pressed on time, but since you just brought it up, I just got to ask, since I'm <laughs> a white person in a room full of black folk, what do you <laughs> feel about the, the, um, the, um, I guess the popularization of Juneteenth? <laughs> so like, uh, so I saw, excuse excuse my <laughs> language, excuse my language. Par, par fuck the, that. <laughs> par, par for the course. No, it, like, it, com it comes with the territory. I'm, I'm, I guess. I'm glad. I don't know I'm glad saying. that you know. Like you know, people are like, yeah, Freedom Day. But when you market that <laughs> shit and you got Walmart sitting making there ice making cream. ice cream for it, like, I it's don't a, like it's that. It's a paid holiday now. Yeah, and, like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, no, nah, uh, I don't know how I feel about I, that. I was talking to Brad Spliff about it, and I was like, listen, shout Brad. Brad Spliff, I, yeah, man. shout out Brad. I was like, I was like you knew this was going to happen. You knew yeah. that white people were going to bastardize oh. this shit immediately. <laughs> yes, like, yes. So, like, just like they do with the, um, St. Patty's Day. Oh, and, my God. And, like, just, like I said, when you, when you make, when you make, Make something like a holiday like that marketable and profitable, it ruins the entire point of it. The, right? Bo the Budweiser Pride beers. You got oh, there's going to be a bunch of white yeah. people in the streets rocking dashikis right. and say, shit. Only us to get the day off. <laughs> <laughs> only, only black people. Only black people. people. <laughs> <laughs> takes me back, again, that takes me back like to Atlanta. Atlanta exactly. <laughs> 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 it's gonna be people three like, well, different I'm, types of Hennessy. I'm a quarter, I'm a quarter black. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. You know, I wasn't in the streets, but I was in the streets. You know, Ancestry.com <laughs> told me. Those, you know, <laughs> those white dudes that got the one percent Native American and don't oh, the registry. Real quick, because uh, because we are in Ipsy, do I so I do want to big up one more thing too? Shout out to uh, Taylor Greens over at Fundamental South Coast Fun Fest is coming up. I want to shout them out because I know. That's going to be a big thing. Yo, shout uh, out Taylor, uh, Anna, yeah. shout out Danny Darling, all the shit that those guys, Everybody's London back, on everyone them yeah. doing yeah. it together. I'm just yeah. saying I was black shout before out. it was cool. Shout, shout, out to, <laughs> shout out to Amplify Project, too. Absolutely. Hey. Danny Absolutely. Darling, London yep. back. Danny, oh Lauren, I need Jardine, to get her in the 734. Kai Five got a project coming out in May. Yo, Kai Five, Kai five yeah. is so dope. So I saw just, him open up for, uh, it was uh, when I ran into you yep, yep, at Danny's show. At Danny's show, Kai Five has a new video that's out. You can check it on all platforms on at, at Kai Five. You can visit him at Kai Five Loops.com. He has a new record out called I mean a new album coming out called Spirit that'll be out on August 
12. Here's one thing I got to say about Kai 5 and something that I appreciate out of the group of people that do this um, this sound where it's built on looping shit, right? Where you, you build a beat yourself and it's it's he's a one-man band, basically. He builds this whole track around himself. But something I love about him that sets him apart from other people is he puts a emphasis on the percussion aspect of doing these loops and a lot of that shit is lacking to me yeah. i feel like a lot of it doesn't yeah. have the yeah. bass lines it doesn't have the drum beats Absolutely. and he definitely does that and, and i think kai five is uh, as good as he is at looping i think a lot of people don't know how fantastic a musician kai five is too kai five plays multiple instruments kai five is a great engineer so this is going to be a really special project that he's going to put out i agree right. yeah I, I that was like one of my takeaways from going to danny's show i was like I was. I came to her after. I was like, "Damn, who who did you get this? Did it open up for you? Like this dude is amazing." And then I ended up talking to him for a yep. little bit, and he ended up being cool as hell. So, yeah, shout out to all those guys as well. But we got to transition on into something old, something new because we got a lot of people in this studio to talk about music I do. with. All right, so we. I want to talk about the second album a little bit too. So that'll like, be some, what, that'll what can be part we of something expect? new in this? It, All right, yeah, let's do that now. So I'll make this sure. real quick. So the second album we've been calling it season two. Um, I like that. Features uh, MCs and producers from Washtenaw County, yep. um, including Giovanni, features including me. Rel me. Two X, two times. Um, Shout out Rel, including obviously Louis Cipher, who's here with us. Reese, and, Lil J. Nah, I'm gonna pass it to the young man. Yeah, Lil <laughs> J. Um, it was we we're really excited about the production we got from True Classic, as well as Say No, another 16 year old guy. Say, say No, right, right. Got a beat tag. Say No on. More, bro. Um, <laughs> I love you know, it. Buff got a couple of joint, got a couple verses on there as well, um, and I got the opportunity to produce a lot of it, and so. One thing that, that was different about this one was I really had to learn about, I really learned a lot about modern production from the guys. I listened to what they liked, I listened mm. to what they wanted to rhyme on, and I tried to to kind of continue to develop my style in that in that direction. So in doing that, um, I grew as a producer as well. We are an intergenerational group, you know, so it's important that all of us learn. Um, they had a lot of great ideas. We basically took the music that they created and kind of crafted and produced an album around it. So um, I'm really proud of it. Uh, I've been kind of sleeping with it and breathing with it and riding with it for the last couple of weeks. So I'm happy with it. Hey, we 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 doing all this talking about the project. Y do y'all do freestyles on the show at all? Oh lord, yeah. You know what? Y'all y'all want a live preview? We've only right had there? two, so let's do it. You want a live preview right now? Let's do it. All right, I can just go. Yeah. You yeah. Want acapella? You want a beat? No, I can do it. All right, acapella. all right. Fuck a beat. I'll go acapella. I'm excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> fuck right. a papa doc. Fuck a. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Bonnie. Let's go, Bonnie. All right, look. How we gonna convince police when we killing our people? Y'all keep pushing beef. We busy pushing the needle. Straight into the skin of those who see me as unequal. And it's sad for a lot of these cats. The dosage will be lethal. Picture my pen, a bullet coming from a gun and steel. Peeling through the skin of all this bigotry and evil. Hey, why they looking at me like I went crazy? They must have never seen a mother mourning her baby. Hey, the way they look at me, I can see the hatred. But that's just because the way the media betray me. Mm. I think America betrayed us. From the slave ships all the way to modern day ages. Got everybody frustrated. And every day the streets be getting more dangerous. Hey! hey. Eric, Yo. Eric, Eric, hold on, hold on. Eric, do we get that? I know who the fuck I'm going to You better got it. Yo, that was... Yo, I'm going to be paying attention. I'm going to be paying attention, bro, for sure. Like I said, like I said, this young man... Needs his music out there. Yes, and oh, needs so my God. We, oh, we're working so on everybody needs yeah. to hear this. I just man. I want to add a little bit to what Rob was saying. So um, we definitely this time around, like the first time around, um, I think us as the kind of leadership, myself, Rod, mm -hmm. we wanted to kind of impart our influence musically a little bit more on the group. Uh, to kind of help shape the sound. But this time, I think we actually kind of took a step back a little bit and let some of the young people kind of lead how the project sounds. I like that. Um, I like that a lot, too. You know, um, and, and really, because really, I, I had a conversation with Rail. Like, after the, the last one, we had a show. He was like, man, I don't even really want to go do the show. I'm like, what's up? He's like, yeah, you know, I like the song, but they ain't really like me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I, and I, 
I listened to that, you right. know what I'm saying? And I respected that. And so this time around, we really wanted the young people to feel like they had a say in how the music sounded, you know? And that's kind of to the point that Rod was making about how he kind of worked on his craft and tweaked his craft a little bit to kind of match the sound that the young people really wanted wanted portrayed, so... Yeah. That's really important too. And like uh, the last like reference I'll make on that is I watched an interview with George Clinton recently, where they asked him um, why that people still why he thinks that people still consider him so relevant and cool, even though he's now in his seventies and eighties. <laughs> and he oh said, I he goes, <laughs> I embrace the young shit yes. all the time. He goes, yes. the, whatever um, youth movement was popping up that annoyed me the most. That's what I focused my brain on the most because yes. I knew that was gonna be the next shit that was gonna blow. Absolutely, <laughs> and I, I think I think just real quick, those of us who are these older or more traditional hip hop fans, we have to acknowledge the fact that innovation drives progress. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing in terms of the accessibility of what people can do, in terms of the new rhythms and new sounds that people are using, we have to speak that language as well. Yep. It's okay. It doesn't make you any less of a hip hop head mm -hmm. right. to say that, you know, I love uh, Young Dolph or I love what ESTG and, and CMG right. is doing. It that, that really bothers me because we got to where we are because people innovated what came before us. It's just stifling. Um, That's all it is. 